Hey guys, Tom Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Burn. So in this movie, we individually follow uh, this woman named Melinda, who works at this gas station. And throughout the day, various people come in. But we do start the movie, in this particular case, we see it near the ending of the movie at the beginning, one of those types of movies where she's already burning the gas station and why she's doing that is what we cut back to. So we cut back to a previous point in time when she's arriving at the gas station. So she takes a quick smoke, she works her way in, and uh, She's one of these kind and very vocal people who uh, will, you know, make her presence known in front of other people, like this other guy she tells not to smoke and stuff like that. Uh, and she gets ready to work there. Uh, she, again, tells other customers what they can buy or what they should buy, etc., etc. So she's doing some cleaning and uh, things are moving pretty slow at first. Cleaning the, the men's room and stuff like that. Uh, she does this quick moment where we see her uh, as she's making her way out, as she's making the coffee. Because uh, I guess th this is like takes place in an older time, like probably the 1990s maybe? I don't know. This is when, like, you had to, like, heat the coffee, like, out in this open space and, like, you had to, like, serve it or something. I, I, I guess that's how it worked. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that's not how they do that anymore. Uh, she was, like, burning herself with the coffee on purpose. Um, so her other co-worker, uh, Sheila, uh, the, the woman on the left of the the poster there. Uh, if she's trying to figure out like how to make herself more appealing, uh, showing off her little butt there. Uh, this older man comes in and like like trying to offer her a gift or something. Um, so they try they're trying to figure out this simple stuff, and then this other woman comes in. Um, so we see our thief, the guy in the middle there. Um, I'm not sure if they gave him a name in the movie. I'm pretty sure they did. Like, he introduced himself, but I never caught it uh, as I was watching the new movie. I just kept referring to him as the thief in, the, in my little notes here. So I do apologize for that one. But nonetheless, um, he's getting ready to do his thing, getting ready to steal. Um... But the a police sheriff, I believe his name is Lou, uh, shows up. So the guy is like trying to, uh, you know, just buy some time, uh, talking about what, trying to buy some random item like condoms or something. Uh, not meanwhile, Melinda there is like super chatty with the cop. Uh, she clearly has this affinity towards this guy in particular, but that shifts because it's more about just being eager to be with someone as we later learn on. So they talk to, uh, she, he talks to the other girl, Sheila, for a bit. Um, Melinda breaks her phone, or at least the screen to the phone. Uh, we have some mocking stuff going on, uh, so Melinda goes out and cries, and we see how desperate she, we see some of those other tendencies come out there. Uh, so as we learn, uh, this little gunman is being hunted down by these bikers, this is why apparently, um, He's robbing this gas station, uh, so he's a man out of desperation. 
But he wants to make sure that they know that he is not kidding that he will shoot uh, at, you know, just the general vicinity to make things clear. So Melinda wants to help uh, this robber guy because uh, he is a guy and I think that's the extent of it um, in terms of that. But a family comes in and, you know, the shooter still has his gun. He's just, like, lurking around the store. Uh, and Miranda's, like, trying, is, like, in the back or something at this point. Again, after the family leaves, still wanting to go with him. Uh, Sheila is, like, talking trash to this guy, like, mocking him over and over again. So he decides he's going to pull her down and then, like, like just, you know, have her downed. Um, so she, he takes her into this, like, back room. Um, meanwhile, uh, Melinda, like, makes sure the coffee's still hot, takes the, the entire thing with her, um, and hits him with it but he gets a shot off and Sheila is shot right in the head she is killed uh, in the process of this so Melinda's now trying to clean up tears in her eyes all flustered and stuff we see the gunman uh, our thief is tied up she like sit in front of him just trying to figure out what the hell is going on and he re-mentions the bikers, and he's trying to, you know, figure out what she wants, because now he's at her mercy, essentially. But he's trying to weasel in a way that's interesting, like, saying that she would be an accomplice, and, like, she wouldn't want that in particular. Um, she mentions her being unhappy because of the whole emotional state that she is in. So she seems to, after a bit, give him some, like, sh like a cigarette and then, um, he asks to get some Advil to clear his mind, but it's just a, an excuse to try to get out. So somewhat we see that someone else is trying to get into the store for a while there in the back. And she comes back. Uh, and as she sits there, uh, she mentions now that she suddenly has this boyfriend. And he's suddenly shifting once again because he's trying to figure out, is this, you know, the best scenario? Is this the best way to do deal with this? So, instead of giving him, or pulling out an Advil, he, uh, she brought out, um, I guess it's Vi Viagra, or some variant of, uh, because he gets that hard on, and she is ready to get down on him regardless of the circumstance. She's that desperate, but when she's getting surprisingly close to doing it, uh, he sort of knocks her down, and, and to that, he gets up, but he rams into the, rams into the locker, and then he gets knocked out, uh, so she grabs the gun and stores it away, she takes his bag, so she's getting ready to leave with a bag, uh, she brings in the guy who is waiting outside, and as he's doing his thing in the corner, opposite corner of her, she's, uh, you know, we see the full extent of, um, her situation as she pulls the gun on herself. So she's had enough, uh, but she doesn't, you know, go through with it though. Um, and he pays, and he, she, he, he goes away. Uh, for whatever he was buying. Uh, so, she decides to call the cops because she's now able to. 
and uh, we see Sheila's boyfriend, who I'll just call, keep calling Matt, uh, arrives and he's trying to figure out where she went. Uh, he, he tries to call her, here's her phone, see that it's on the floor, seems a little suspicious about that. And, uh, Melinda starts to lie to him about, uh, Sheila going to a motel with a boyfriend, and then he leaves. So Miranda goes back outside, and the bikers arrive at this point, the ones that the thief mentioned earlier. So, she pulls out the gun she that she stored, everyone else pulls out their guns, and after some convincing of, like, being desperate, the bikers decide that they're going to leave. And, oddly enough, that is the last time we see of them. Uh, I was kind of expecting for them to come back at the end, uh, but we don't get any more of them at this point. Uh, almost kind of makes it feel a little unnecessary that they were even in the movie. I get that it gave... The, the thief some sort of excuse, but at the same time makes the excuse not fully realized if they're just gonna show up and leave. I don't know. Um, so she tries to uh, break this lock and then she goes in for a smoke when she realizes she can't quite do that yet. Uh, so now at this point she grabs some oil cans, fills them up with gas, uh, hides them away as the, get, as the cop returns, uh, Lou, uh, and he mentions the stolen vehicle, the one the, the, our thief came in. So she's trying to worm her way out of this, uh, so... She has the gun stored away once again. Uh, he mentions the boyfriend as the suspicious guy to go check him out at the hotel. Uh, the cop wants to do a sweep instead, so she's freaking out. And he goes in for the sweep, as he claims to do, and he says it's clear at the point this point in time. So we know that the, the thief got out of that room. Uh, we get a cliche of her calling out hello, which is one of the cliches I'm never particularly fond of in horror slash, or just horror movies in general. Um, again, it always seems very unnecessary. Uh, that's like a line, like a single line you give when you really have nothing going on, and... There was a lot going on. I, I again, I really don't. I didn't see the need for them to throw that cliche in there, but whatever. Um, so the cop leaves, and when he does, uh, she continues to light up or uh, put the oil in the gas station uh, throughout the gas station. Uh, she continues to take the bag, uh, the backpack that she got from him. She drops her gun on, um, on the counter, which already had oil on it. And then the lights go out. So the door to the outside is locked from the inside, so she can't get out. Um, and the robber, the thief, sorry, makes his way around and, um... We see that the boyfriend had came back to check in on her, so the two of them get into an, an encounter, um, and then we see the thief taking out the boyfriend and killing him. So she tries to call the cop again, and she does. Um, so he makes his way over there, and he's like trying to get more stuff, and Miranda begs the rob the thief to just leave or whatever. So he points out, uh, he picks up the gun that has been oiled up, um, and then decides that he's going to try to shoot at her while it was already oiled up. Um, the gun backfires uh, from being oiled up, and then he catches on fire as the other oil catches on fire and then, yeah. 
So she bur she gets burned a bit as well, uh, grabbing a fire extinguisher on her way out, uh, printing herself out, and then uh, proceeding to leave uh, with a once again called back Lou. Uh, there was a small interaction of whether or not he she felt that he could possibly be interested in her. Uh, she sees that he was legitimate in his feelings towards her, and he asked about he asked about what happened in this night of nights, and it just leaves with that question to be unanswered whether or not she's going to tell the truth about everything that happened or if she's going to leave some stuff out, as she's been known to have lied throughout quite a bit of the movie. So a bit of an interesting open-ended movie in terms of like, oh, is she going to tell the truth or is she going to lie again? Um, again, I do think that there is that missing piece of what uh, these, um, these bikers coming in and making their scene, uh, you know, if they weren't going to come back, I don't see, again, it just feels like an incomplete thought. Um, other than that issue and... Uh, like a, a like a, mud, a other minor issue. I think this movie is fine. Uh, I enjoyed it for the most part. Again, I think just that little bit would have helped uh, for clarification of just like, okay, so that's what happened to the bikers, and you could have still left it open ended. That part's fine to me. Um, I like the idea of like, oh, is it going to be this way or this way, and leaving it open ended, but. Again, I think I would give it like a 6 out of 10. Um, again, could have just used a little bit more cleaning up in terms of like other things of like what happened to the bikers. Uh, and that's my review of Burn. And if you enjoyed this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my Discord server. The other to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. And until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.